This is the time in our service for meditation, so I invite you to get comfortable wherever you're seated. Get things out of your lap and get those feet firmly planted on the floor. Close your eyes if you're comfortable, and we're going to begin by breathing some deep breaths in and out. Drawing that breath down into your body, into the tailbone, all the way down to the back, and breathing it back out again. In your mind's eye, I invite you to see a beautiful light green color Breathing that in and breathing that down into the small of your back. And with every breath you take, it becomes stronger and stronger, more beautiful and shimmering. This beautiful light green color is beginning to Fill up your entire being. From the top of your head to the tip of your toes, you are emanating this beautiful light green color. This color is the color of divine strength in your body. And as that color settles in, you begin to feel differently. You begin to feel that strength filling your body. See that green light pulsating up and down your spine, making you feel stronger. See it giving you life-giving strength. And as you let, let it settle down in your body, I invite you to take a moment of silence and feel that divine strength that is you in the silence. What we notice as we focus on this beautiful, light, green, shimmering, divine strength in us is that as we focus on it, our minds become clearer. We begin to see in our mind's eye that which is of most importance to us, our highest goal our dreams become clear to us. And the more we focus on this divine strength within us, the more we are able to know what it is that we are to do, what is ours to do with this divine strength moving forward. That clarity gives us the steps that we need to take to live in the highest form of that divine strength that we possibly can. And so we choose that focus in this moment, these next right steps for us are irresistible. 
as we choose that focus. We feel expanded and we feel a sense of hope blossoming in our souls for what it is that we are to show up as in this divine stream. We're so grateful for these 12 powers that live in us, as us, and through us. And as we focus on them, we begin to be able to express more of them in and through us to really emulate that which we are, that which we came here to be. And so we say, thank you, indwelling spirit. As we begin to be bring our focus back into this room, into this time and this space and wiggle our toes and fingers. And whenever you're ready, just open those beautiful eyes. We say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for our divine strength. So this past weekend, my family and I got an opportunity to get out of the house for a little while and go down to the county fair. And Myla had a friend with her. My granddaughter had her little friend. And so the majority of the time was spent with Matt and Mangel, Angel and I watching Myla and her friend getting off and on these rides. And it made me think about a story in Paul, Hassel book, Paul Hasselbeck and the Holton's book, Power Up Your Life, about how people get scary before they get on rides and how we have a tendency to talk ourselves out of it, especially as we're nearing the line of the scary ride. Well, these girls didn't have any of that. They were up and down and in and out of some of the things I would never see myself getting on, but the idea is that we create stories around why we can't do something, and that fear is what holds us back. But we have that power of strength within us to go forth and do, and when we actually talk ourselves into it and go ahead and get in that line and do that ride, afterwards we're like kicking ourselves like, that was so easy, I wish I'd done that earlier. So we have to wonder, you know, why do we create these stories in our minds about why we can or can't do something? Because we have all power and strength within us. We push through that fear and we give up that old story and we go ahead and do what it is that is ours to do. Those girls rode pretty much every ride at the county fair, at least all the scary ones. And it was fun just to watch and witness them moving through that. Well, this month we have a new theme, Finding Strength. This is our second month of the 12 powers. And we're going to spend the entire month talking about spiritual strength in particular. So we have a new affirmation. Let's say it together. I express the strength and vitality of God. That is our goal. This entire month, we're going to look at all the aspects of our power of the ability of strength. We don't actually have strength. We are strength. There's a big difference there in consciousness. Our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, discerned this power of strength as the disciple Andrew. Andrew is located in the small of our back and is represented by the light color green. More about that later. Now back to the power up story. The authors describe strength as the ability to endure, stay the course, last, be persistent, persevere, and be stable. That's a pretty hefty Thing, to be able to be all of those things. And I want to tell you, we are currently in a situation here in our ministry where we're getting to walk our talk. We're 
getting opportunities to persevere as we had this water leak, this water pipe busted in our ministry. And I know you can't tell by looking at it now, but we have sustained a tremendous amount of water damage in our carpet and in our walls. And so there is going to be much work ahead of us in the next weeks and months to come. But we're going to stay the course because we know and we walk our talk. We know that God is in the midst of this and God always means it for good. So we're going to lean into our power of strength. We're going to do it because you see strength is a gift of God just like all the rest of our 12 powers. And they have a tendency to flow more easily in us when we invite it in, when we encourage it. We always feel stronger when we maintain our close connection with the God in us. So today, we're in Scripture. You're very familiar with this. Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I like that one a lot. I use it often as an affirmation. It helps me when I'm facing things that feel like a struggle. We have within us that spirit of God that we can draw upon at any time. We have all the strength in us already that we already need. We just need to remind ourselves this strength is consciously awakened first in our intellectual nature, and then it's developed with our prayerful concentration of oneness. And the result of that focus is a continuous, unlimited supply of strength. This is basically our teachings of Principle 3 and Principle 4. Because when you focus on something, and then when you take it into prayer, that is the opportunity in which we really can bring our strength forward in our lives. We know that we can do pretty much anything. Well, this disciple Andrew was a fisherman when he first met Jesus. And he was already strong physically because of the work that he did. But when he chose to follow Jesus, he had to develop strength in a whole nother way. He had to develop a strength as the ability to determine a course of action and be able to persist in it. He had a very special kind of strength that is needed if we're going to reach our full God potential, our God-given potential. And it grew slowly in him, like it can grow slowly in us as well. Can you imagine what it must have been like to give up his whole life and his livelihood just to be able to follow Jesus? I'm not so sure that all of us would have that kind of strength to give up everything that we know that is familiar to us to follow this man, Jesus. Well, right now, we're in the season for nonviolence. It began on January 30th with the anniversary of the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi. And it goes all the way until April the 4th, which is the anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King. I can think of no two other people who have had that power of strength in such an awesome way that they walked through so many barriers and so much injustice and were able to come through on the other side without even a violent action. How strong they were in the middle of overwhelming challenges. I believe they were both fueled by their passion and their intentions to make the world a better place through social action and grassroots work. This must have given them courage and bravery 
to keep at it in spite of all the barriers that came up against them, all the barriers like injustice, they inspire us to do better, to, be, to do better in our own lives and also in our community. They were heroes, and we need heroes and heroines, especially at this particular time, don't we? We need people that we can aspire to model our lives after. But I want to tell you that all of us, every single one of us, has walked through a challenge in our life where we had to dig down deep to get the strength to move through a circumstance in our life. I know for me, personally, it has been and was my witnessing of my husband's journey through his physical challenges, the illnesses that he had. There were times when I didn't think that I had what it took to be able to move through all of it. And I can remember one particular time when I didn't want to go to Unity Village to finish my LUT piece because he was so ill at that time. And he said, you have to go. You have to go. You have to finish, you know. And so I went on to Kansas City. And then I felt the whole time like I was conflicted about I should be there. No, I should be here, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And there were people there at Unity Village that I was taking classes with who said things to me like, we can see your strength. You are stronger than all of these circumstances that are being put before you. They could see what I could not. I felt so conflicted about my time there. But they encouraged me, and I finished. And I went back, and he was fine. It was just that time of that having to really dig down deep. Caregivers are heroes. Lots of prayers during that time and lots of affirmations helped me make it through. And I learned so much about myself. There's a, a quote that I read by Thomas Paine that says, I love the man that can smile in trouble, that can gather strength from distress and grow brave by reflection. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. When we look back, we can maybe see. But when we're in the middle of a struggle, we can't necessarily see our own bravery. We're just moving through it, trying to survive day by day, aren't we? But looking back, we recognize there was that seed of strength within us the entire time that got us through. Well, there's a movie, Braveheart. It came out a number of years ago. And the hero in the story, William Wallace, was on a mission to revenge the, his wife's death. And he started out with such a passion for revenge. That's all that he could see. But along the way, there was a shift. It seemed more like the more frequently he was tested, the more he dug down and found this strength within him that ended up transforming that revenge to a mission of truth and justice. It was an example of spiritual strength. It's a spiritual muscle that we can learn to grow. So many strong people that we're witnessing in this particular time in our lives, if you think about it, all the soldiers that come back that have been wounded in the war who have to learn how to live their lives with some sort of disability, perhaps a PTSD. The war has left its mark on them, and yet they take every day by day and move through it. They dig down and they find that strength. So many survivors of major illnesses that have moved through it and come out on the other side 
healthy and happy and grateful and seeing the gift in what they went through. And now we think about all of our healthcare workers. We think about all of our first responders, all of the teachers, everybody that's out there, while a lot of us are still cocooning, and they're doing the work. They're teaching our children. They're still saving lives. We love and bless all of them for all that they're doing, all of our brothers and sisters that put themselves out there and use their power of strength. In her book, Adventures in Resilience, Sharon Connors shares a personal story about a leadership event that she attended where they were asked to pick an artist that they really admire, somebody that inspires them, and she picked Andrea Bocelli beautiful tenor voice that he has, who was blind by the age of 12, did not let him stop him at all. Nothing kept him back. He still learned to play multiple instruments, skateboards, rides horses. Nothing really holds him back. And he said once in an interview, that we have to value and develop our spiritual gifts and that he invested himself completely in doing this. He overcame all the barriers. He didn't perceive himself as lacking in anything. The more we grow our strength by walking through our fears, the more we grow a bigger conception of God and a bigger conception of the life that we can live. You see, faith and strength are really so connected. And the more we believe in something, the easier it is for us to support and sustain it. There was a psychologist named Richard Davison who studied the differences between people who can stay the course in the midst of challenges and those who it sort of debilitates when they face a crisis. And so he did a study on these, and he found that people who persevere, their prefrontal cortex rapidly wins over the limbic system. But in the easily disturbed group, the amygdala, called the seat of fear, it just takes over. It takes over in their bodies. Our practice of strength shows up in our brains. Using our strength impacts our thoughts and our feelings and our actions. So it's really important for us to pay attention. This is Super Bowl Sunday. Tonight, here in Tampa, Florida, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are taking on the Kansas City Chiefs for Super Bowl 55. I know people who are rooting for both sides, and I have a little bit of a conflict about it because we spent so much time in Kansas City area, and all of that enthusiasm was so contagious. And we have some congregants that used to live here that are now in Kansas City that I know are rooting for them. But how wonderful that we get to host it here in Florida, in our Tampa Bay. Let's see who has the most strength and will persevere to take home that trophy. May the best team win. It's time for a little joke. So this retail clerk is telling a story about a customer who came in and she said, I want to see those pants you had advertised in the paper recently. In fact, I saw it in today's paper that you had these pants on sale. And the clerk looked at her and said, we didn't have an ad in the newspaper today about pants. And she insisted that it was the truth. So he went back and got the newspaper and brought it out. And they flipped through it together until they found the ad, and the ad was for another store. And exasperated, this customer glared at him and said, in my newspaper, it said it was in this store. <laughs> Some people 
<laughs> so I want to close today again from Sharon Connor's book Adventures in Resilience. She's sharing a story about the film The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, where Button says, for what it's worth, it's never too late to be whoever it is that you want to be. I hope you live a life you're proud of. And if you find that you are not, I hope you have the strength to start all over again. Spiritual strength, you see, is our spiritual backbone. And we can and we will persevere no matter what comes to us. And that's the truth. And so it is. Namaste. Now is the time in our service when we have the opportunity to give from our good back into our ministry. So if you're at home, if you would like to click that donate button, we would most be most grateful. The rest of us are going to say our blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, that this is so, and so it is. God bless.